Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would be with us in a special way. Open our understanding to know the scripture by divine revelation. To know the scripture as it is being fulfilled. And bless us together. Save those who are lost. Heal those who are sick. Deliver those who are bound. We give glory to you, to you, the only true God. Thank you. We thank you for the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. We thank you for the redemption. We thank you for eternal life. Dear Lord, bless this small gathering and be with us. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. 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 So, as the time is moving very, very quickly, we're going to share God's Word with you. Usually, we have special meetings but this time, we had no time to really announce or arrange a meeting. Originally, we planned to go to the Panja. We wanted to come to Berlin, but it just so happened I could only touch. Uh, what is it now? It's. Uh, uh, sorry? Chennai, yeah, Chennai and Hyderabad and, and Delhi and then I have to go back back. So just to make sure that the last ones will take the seats. Yes. Yeah. Who can come a little further? Yes. Okay, okay. Now it's, yeah, I think everybody, thank you. God bless you, young man. So, today I'm going to share a number of scriptures. And our subject is the second coming of Christ. The return of Christ and our preparation to be ready when he comes. Just for you to know, to know that this is the most important time in the history of mankind. This is the most important time in the history of the New Testament Church. And we must search the scriptures to know the promises of God because true faith can only anchor into the promises of God. If you do not have a promise, you have religious imagination. Religious imagination. And the whole Christian world is full of religious imaginations. When did Abraham believe in God? After the Lord gave him the promise. When the Lord gave the promise to Abraham, he believed and saw the promise fulfilled. It's a personal relationship with the Lord. 
and every true servant of God must never establish the relationship to himself, but always to God. Amen. Always to God. Amen. A true man of God will connect the people with God and God with the people. Every prophet, every man of God had thus, says the Lord, the message for that specific time. To give you the example, when the Lord made the next promise to Abraham, after 400 years, I will bring your people out of bondage. That was again a promise. And when the 400 years had come and gone, the Lord himself appeared to Moses in a burning bush. Moses looked at the bush and the voice spoke, Take off your shoes, for the ground you are standing on is holy ground. And the Lord said, I remember my promise, and I'm sending you, and I will go with you. I will go with you. So God always uses somebody as his servant, a prophet or man sent from God to confirm the promise and to see the promise fulfilled. Coming directly to the first coming of the Lord. It says in Malachi chapter 3, I will send my messenger before my face, and he will prepare my way before me. When the time was fulfilled, that scripture was a reality. The angel Gabriel came to Zacharias, Luke chapter 1, stood at the right hand of the altar, and gave the promise to Zacharias about the birth of John the Baptist, that he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to prepare the way of the Lord. So at the first coming of Christ, over 100 Prophecies and promises from the Old Testament were fulfilled. One brother, by the name of Dr. Larkin, counted 109 promises from the Old Testament which were fulfilled at the first coming of Christ. Everything was written about the birth of the Savior, about his sufferings, about his ministry. Everything was written right to his suffering and death on the cross. Psalms 22 begins, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Isaiah 53 shows our Lord on his way through Gethsemane right to Calvary when he gave his life as the Lamb of God. And John the Baptist pointed and said, This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
And John says in John chapter 1, I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize told me, Upon you say, the Spirit descended. He is the one that baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So whenever the scripture is fulfilled, God uses someone, God uses someone to show, to show by the grace of God that this is what God promised is what we so I want you to very, very clearly understand we're now in a prophetic age in the last generation before the return of Christ. And many Bible prophecies and predictions are being fulfilled. Especially when our Lord spoke in Matthew 24, in Mark 13, Luke 21, referring to the nations, referring to wars and what would take place on the face of the earth. And three times our Lord said, when you see all these things come to pass, then look up, for your redemption is drawing near. So we understand from the fulfillment of what God promised in His Word that this is the generation of which the Lord has spoken, very I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. All things be fulfilled. The main promise of the return of our Lord is found in John chapter 14 from verse 1 to 3 where our Lord said I go to prepare the place and then I will return and I will take you to be where I am. That is the main promise from the lips of our Lord about his return. Then we have the scriptures which show precisely what will take place before his return and what will take place at his return. Before his return the promise of Malachi, chapter 4, must and was fulfilled. God himself said, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. If you wish to know about the great and dreadful day of the Lord, you must read Isaiah chapter 13, starting with verse 6. You must read Joel chapter 2. You must read Zephaniah. You must read the Old and the New Testament. You also must read Acts 2 verse 20 where the Apostle Peter refers the prophecy of Joel, sun will turn into darkness and the moon into blood before, before the great day of the Lord 
comes. So at the end of the day of salvation, and according to Isaiah chapter 49 and 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we are still in the day of salvation, in the time of grace, right at the end of this time, God fulfilled His promise and sent a messenger. And you have to understand this. If a promise would only be in the Old Testament and not confirmed in the New Testament, then we could wait and say, but like the promise upon John the Baptist, you can read Matthew chapter 11, where our Lord Himself said, This is He of whom it is written, I will send my messenger before my face. If you go to Mark chapter 1, verse 1, the gospel of Jesus Christ began in this wise, as it is written in the prophets. And the two main promises from the Old Testament are in the first three verses of the Gospel of Mark. The promise of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, Behold a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And the promise, I will send my messenger before my face to prepare my way before you. And therefore, as the promise was fulfilled in John the Baptist's ministry, he was a man sent from God with the word of God promised for that day. And all who went to hear him obeyed and believed and were baptized in the Jordan River. And according to Luke chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, the ministry of John the Baptist was to turn the hearts of the Old Testament fathers to the New Testament children and make ready a people for the Lord. But now the second part is being fulfilled that the hearts of God's children are turned back to the beginning to the apostolic fathers before the return of Christ. There must be a restoration of all things. And the promise in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4, I will send to you Elijah the prophet, even after the ministry of John the Baptist was long finished, our Lord said in Matthew 17, verse 11, Truly Elijah shall first come and restore. Amen. And restore. The word restore you don't find in the promises concerning John the Baptist. Only the word prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. But now the last thing to bring restore, bring back, bring things back to where they were at the very beginning. Also in Mark chapter 9, verse 12, our Lord said, truly Elijah shall first come and restore all things. So before the return of Christ, before the great and terrible day 
of the Lord comes. Before sun turns into darkness, and the moon into blood, and the stars fall from heaven, God kept His promise and sent a prophet like Elijah. What did Elijah do? He took the twelve stones according to the twelve tribes. He rebuilt the altar and then he put the sacrifice on the altar and then the water was poured upon the sacrifice. And if you go to 1 Kings chapter 8 time, after he had done this, he prayed, Lord God, let it be known today that you are the only true God and I am your servant and that I have done all this according to your word. That was the moment the fire fell. So in the same way, there had to be a message of calling out, a message of restoration, a message of preparation. And if I would not know what God has done in my time, why should I be here? Everybody knows what God has done in the days of Moses or in the days of the beginning of the New Testament. But we must know what God promised for this day and what God has done and is still doing in our time. In Acts chapter 3, from verse 17 to 21, it says, Christ must remain in heaven until the times of restoration have come, which God has promised by the mouth of hope all his holy prophets since the time began. So, before the return of Christ, everything must be restored. The first and the last sermon must be the same. The last and the first baptism must be the same. Absolutely everything as it was at the beginning of the New Testament church must be restored, must be restored in the church of the living God. Amen. And as you know, I had a very great privilege. I knew Brother Brennan for 10 years. I saw with my own eyes what God has done in our time. I saw people born blind receive their son. I saw the cripples take their bed and walk away. I saw Bible days. I saw Jesus Christ the same yesterday, Amen. today, Amen. and forever. Amen. And I can say, like John the Apostle, and even like Peter could say, we were with him on the holy mountain when the voice came from heaven, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Please notice Matthew chapter 3, 17 and Matthew 17 verse 5. In Matthew 3, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In Matthew 17, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Three words. Hear ye him. Don't hear anything. Hear ye him. Because he is the one that walks among the seven golden kinds. So, by the grace of the Lord, I'm here. For one purpose, and this is my last visit. I've been to India 
24 times since 1964 when I came here the first time and God is blessed and this time might be my last time. I said to the Lord, Moses started his ministry when he was 80. I started my ministry long, long ago, but now I'm 80. So I said, Lord, I might have to finish at 80. But by the grace of God, I want you to know, as I said, I had the privilege to know Brother Brian personally for 10 years. Drove with him in the same car. In fact, he was driving. And I was sitting next to him, eating at the same time. Being in his meetings in Germany, in his meetings in the USA. And it was in 1958, in a World Conventions in Dallas, Texas, USA, when all the famous evangelists were gathered and they spoke in the morning services and in the afternoon services. And Brother Branham was the main speaker in the evening services. So I was one day, the second day, the third day and I saw the big difference between all these other gentlemen in Brother Branham and his ministry. And then I went to him. I spoke to him. I said, please tell me why is it? And just ask him a few questions. And then he said, Brother Frank, I have a message that I must bring the last message to the people of God. At the end of that conversation, which was on June the 11th, 1958, also June 11th, like in 1933, and his brother Branham said, Brother Frank, you will return to Germany with this message. I have no knowledge of what message means. That was in 1958. But then, of course, the Lord opened my understanding to know the promised word. And when I heard Brother Brennan give his testimony of what he was commissioned on June the 11th, 1933. You heard about it, maybe you read about it, but I, I saw witnesses in April 1966. I saw witnesses in Jeffersonville, in the Branham Tabernacle, who were present on June the 11th, 1933, when Brother Brennan was baptizing, when the supernatural light came down and just coming above him, and from the supernatural cloud, the words were said, as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, you are sent with the message that will forerun the second coming of Christ. When I heard this, it just penetrated my heart. And from 1958, I heard every sermon Brother Brennan preached. I grew under his ministry right to the end. And whether you can believe it or not, but on December the 24th, 1965, Brother Frank, Brother Frank had a vision. 
And I saw Brother Brian on the supernatural cloud, leaning over like this, being taken up and taken out, not knowing, because I live in Germany, I didn't know about the accident, I didn't know about this passing away, and in this vision, I said, Brother Branham, you are not the son of man, why do I see you on this cloud, not knowing that that was the moment he was taken from time to eternity. And by the way, our Lord was taken up by a cloud. By the way, in Revelation <coughs> chapter 11, the two prophets were taken up by a cloud. And according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we are going to be taken into glory by the clouds, plural, because we're coming from all the different nations. God works in supernatural ways to give His divine permission to fulfill His word. And in connection with this, beloved brothers and sisters, I have a responsibility that might be no one living on earth at this moment would have. Because I, Brother Frank, heard the voice of the Lord God with this ear. With this ear. In the German language on April the 2nd, 1962. That was a great step. I did a number of wonderful experiences, but that was the first time I heard the almighty, the all penetrating, the all commanding voice of the Lord in my language, which is the German language. I rose up early prepared myself for the day. Then I went to the window, pulled the curtains left and right, looked out the window, and just, it was just about the breaking of a new day. The sun was not yet up, but the night was over. Just at the breaking of a new day, and March was rain, rain, rain. And this was the first day. No cloud in the sky. So I was somehow happy that the rainy season is over. And I came back into the room and had a short prayer, committing the day to the Lord. And just from where I stood to my feet, I looked again towards the wind, and then it happened. From up and from the right, my servant, your time for this set will soon be over. I will send you to other cities to preach my word. And next moment, I was flat on the ground with one blow, with one blow from the impact of that voice. You can never, never, never imagine what it does to you. It goes through all the bones that you have. But the Lord continued to speak. My servant stored in food for a great family is coming, then thou shalt stand amidst the people to give out the food. And anyone who knows the German history, it was very sad after World War II. The nation was divided, Berlin was divided, East and West, and it was in August 1961 
The wall in Berlin was built, the wall was built. Russian tanks on one side, American tanks on the other side. And we did not know what would happen next. So honestly, I thought there would be a natural tragedy in our nation. So we stored in food everything you need to survive. We had stored in and stored in. But no tragedy came, no famine came. But I said, Lord, take my life. I cannot preach anymore. I cannot live anymore. You said there will be a famine, and there's no famine. Take my life. I'm not ready to preach anymore. I don't want to live anymore. And just then, a brother, to make a long story short, then I took a flight to the USA to see Brother Brown, to get the answer from God. And it was December the 3rd, Monday, December the 3rd, 1962. We were together, Brother Brown and Brother Frank, Brother Saltman, and Brother Bruce. And Brother Brennan asked me about Switzerland and Germany, spoke about the meetings, and then I interrupted. I said, Brother Brennan, I have come to ask you something. That was the end. I just noticed that the supernatural came down. His right eye would close a little and I knew now he sees a vision. And he repeated word for word in the English language the Lord had spoken to me in the German language on April the 2nd. I said there. I couldn't speak a single word. And then he said, Brother Frank, you misunderstood. You thought there would be a natural famine and you stored up much natural food, groceries and so forth. But God will send the famine to hear his words and the food you have to put in store is the promised word of God for this day. My tell you, a bird, a bird was taken from me. And then he continued to speak. And finally he said, Brother Frank, wait with the giving out of the food until you get the rest of the food. So when Brother Branham was taken to glory, I knew the time had come. The last sermon was preached on December the 12th, 1965, and on December the 24th, he was taken to glory. So, these eyes have seen him, the last, in the coffin. As I flew over to Germany, I took a trip to the funeral home, I said, I must know that William Brennan is in this coffin. And Mr. Coote was very good. He said, please come with me. We went up the stairs. He opened the coffin. These eyes have seen Brother Brennan in the coffin. But you cannot imagine how I felt, and especially at the funeral service, they were singing for over two hours. Only believe, only believe, on the wings of a snow white dove. I just wept and wept and wept. I did not sing at all, not at all. I was praying, I was asking, oh Lord, 
Why did this happen? And so forth. Why did you take your servant? I was just praying and weeping and saying, Lord, I don't understand this. But beloved, when I came back into the hotel room, something happened. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, filled my soul. I could almost feel it. I could almost feel it. And it spoke in my heart. Now your time has come. Now your time has come. To go from city to city, from country to country, to preach the word. For 15 years, I was preaching by earning my money. I was working for the German government. For 15 years, I was preaching and working, earning my money. I never took an offering in my life. I never mentioned money in my life. So, you understand, when I returned from the funeral, the first thing I did, I gave notice. I stopped working and I started the international ministry. So now, I look back to at least 50 years of international ministry having been to exactly 155 countries, these feet, these feet have stepped on 155 countries in the past 50 years. Just because of that commission the Lord gave me on April the 2nd, being truthful, to carry out this commission and to share the precious and holy word of God with the people. What we also must understand is this, and I wrote it into my Bible, because the Americans have changed, have changed what Brother Brennan was told I've written the precise text from the lips of Brother Branham into my Bible. And he said, repeating what the Lord had spoken to him as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, the message given to you will be a forerunner of the second coming of Christ. The Americans have left the word message out altogether. They just publish in all their writings as John the Baptist was sent at the first coming of Christ. You are sent at the second coming of Christ. Finished? So for them, everything ended with Brother Brennan. There's no publication in the English language coming from the USA which gives it 100% statement which came from the lips of the Lord. A message, the message will be forerunning the second coming of Christ. No, again, Brother Brennan, even made this statement, not that I would be the forerunner, but the message was the forerunner. These are the words from Brother Brandon Smith. So, I want you to understand, I must take the things of God seriously. I must be honest. I don't dare to change a single word. How many times did Brother Brian say it was one word in the Garden of Eden that was added 
And the whole thing was changed. Eve was deceived and she deceived Adam and the fall came and people were separated from the Lord God and from eternal life. So I must take every word precisely and leave it the way it is. So make it very briefly. We are now at the end of the end time. The message has reached the ends of the earth. We now have over one, I think we have succeeded now with 900 and we're about 1,000 people from all over the world are connected by internet to hear the messages I preach at the mission center once a month. Every first Sunday and the Saturday connected to the first Sunday and back home in the mission center and the messages are translated simultaneously into 12 main languages on earth. They can be heard in Russian and English and Spanish and French and in all the different languages all over the earth because this is the time when the bride of Christ must come into the unity of the faith. At the present time, we are having so many different views. Some believe the Lord has already come. Some believe the rapture has taken place. Some believe the time of grace is over. Some believe the seven thunders are seven special men. They just believe and believe this and believe that and believe anything and everything, but not the Word of God. Yeah. Brothers who are ministering the Word of God, remember forever Revelation chapter 22 from verse 18. Whosoever would add to the words of the prophecy of this book, the curse is upon him. He be who he is, he be who he is. Regardless, regardless, if anybody adds to that written word of God, the curse is upon him, and he will not, he will not seek the Lord. So we must be honest, we must be correct, we must be truthful. If it's not in the Bible, it's not God who is saying it. God did not forget anything. Everything we need to know is in the Word of God. This is the complete testimony of Jesus Christ. When one brother in Virginia, USA said, Brother friend, you missed the rapture. I said, Brother, what are you saying? He said, Well, we are all raptured. But I said, But you're here. And I'm here. You're not changed, and I'm not changed. Yeah, the rapture is a revelation. The rapture is a revelation. If you have the revelation, the rapture. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rapture is a reality. Amen. The first coming of the Lord was a reality. Amen. The second coming of the Lord will be a reality. Amen. The raising of the dead will be a reality. Amen. The changing of these bodies will be a reality. Amen. The rapture will be a reality. Amen. Not a foolish doctrine, but a reality. Amen. So we have to put these things to where they belong and just be honest with the people. Please do not support any brother who doesn't stay in the Word of God. Amen. Because the Holy Word of God says in 1 John, no lie originates in, in with the truth. And every interpretation is a lie. The Word of God is the truth. Amen. And every interpretation is a lie. So, don't believe any interpretation, just believe 
the word of God. And God Amen. watches over his word to fulfill, to fulfill what he promised and everything will happen the way it is written because God is responsible for the promises he made. He watches over his word to fulfill what he promised. Just to summarize what I'm saying here today in the name of the Lord. First, God makes promises. And when the time comes, he fulfills what he promised. He's never late. He will be in time and on time. He will just do things at the right time. You can understand for me, it is very hard. Because already, in the days of Brother Brandon, I was expecting the return of the Lord. And how many years have come and gone since 1933? 80 years, 80 years have come and gone since 1933 when the message was given to Brother Brother and when he was told that the message given to him would forerun the second coming of Christ. And then again, and then again, we read about the Word of God that welcome everybody but for you brothers for you brothers <laughs> yeah so the late but not too late so in finalizing let me make these few remarks we are in the time when the last message is reaching the ends of the earth. And we call him, maybe this young brother can stand and some other brother can take his seat. No problem. And so we understand by the grace of God, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations and then the end will come. And then the end will come. There's never been a time before where the full gospel, including everything, every promise, was ever preached on the earth before. And we're just so grateful to Almighty God for all these possibilities that we have to share the Word of God, not only in the preachings with DVDs and CDs and, and uh, with circular letters and so forth, and brochures dealing with different subjects, but we do our utmost to share the Word of God with God's people. And please believe it and receive it. We're honestly very, very close to the return of our Lord and Savior. And when the concern is the second coming of Christ, then you have to go to Matthew 25. Behold the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. You must watch where the Bible speaks about son of God, son of man, son of David, son of Abraham. You must watch in which connection these things are according to the plan of salvation. Every title, every description has its place in the Word of God. So we understand now 
his return will be as bridegroom. Behold, the bridegroom comes. So what is happening? Only those who are part of the bride will make ready. Now if, if there is a bride in your, in your uh, vicinity or in your area, all the ladies continue as usual. But there's one who has a promise, and she is the bride, and she waits for the marriage, and she is the only one who prepares because she has a promise. Why do I emphasize the fact that the true children of God believe every promise of God? The others, they walk in their own ways. So, when Paul writes to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, all of God's promises are yea and amen through Christ by us. First, a promise. Now, I can refer to, if there is a marriage to be, there is an engagement. There is a promise. There is a preparation. So all who are part of the bride of Christ, now, hear the last call. They have the promise, and they believe the promise, and they expect and receive what God has promised in our day and time. The rest of the one. You can go from denomination to denomination. They all move in their own ways. But those who are part of the bride of Christ, please remember, even Revelation 19, verse 7, and his bride has made herself ready. Coming back to Luke chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, and people ready for the Lord. So the last message is the calling out time. It's a separation time. It's a restoration time for the bride of Christ. For the bride of Christ. So we understand from the word of God that this is the time. This is the time when the last message is going forth. And please remember, even up to Revelation chapter 21, the Bible says, I will show you the bride and we saw the new Jerusalem coming in. And he saw the twelve pillars and the twelve gates, and he saw the names of the twelve tribes and the names of the twelve apostles. Please, beloved brethren, who share the word of God with us, take it seriously. We must be restored to the original foundation, to the original teachings of the apostles. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they remind in the doctrines of the apostles in prayer and in the breaking of bread. So as I said in the beginning, the last sermon and the first sermon must be 100% the same. The last baptism and the first baptism must be 100% the same. Everything, everything as it was at the very, very beginning, not 50 years after, at the very, very beginning, when all the true believers were one heart and one soul, and they came together, there were no divisions, no fractions, no, they were one heart, in one soul at the original beginning. So all the divisions must end. They must end. The bride of Christ must be united under Christ's bed. And we all must be baptized 
by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. Amen. I hope Amen. you understand even Matthew 28, 19 with Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The Lord said baptizing them into the name, not names, yes, yes, name. I'm Father, but that's not my name. I'm a son, but not that's not my name. Father is what he is. Son is what he is. But what is the name? Baptizing them into the name in which God revealed himself in heaven as our Father on earth in his only begotten Son in the believers by the Holy Spirit. Three manifestations of one and the same God. God above us, with us, in us to accomplish his own plan of salvation. To take us back as sons and daughters of God place us into our original position. So, beloved friends, this is God's time for God's people and it's also your time. It's your time to even take this day very seriously. Just don't move on as usual. Consider it. Please consider it. We're living in a special time very, very near to the return of Christ. The last message is going forth. And as we already said, everything God promised in His Word is connected to reality. And at the return of Christ, the voice of the archangel will be heard. The trumpet of God will sound. And the Lord himself will descend. Please read Luke 24, verse 50 and 51. Please read Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. In one place you read, he looked as he was taken up into heaven. And in Acts chapter 1, the same Jesus that was taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you have seen him going up. So don't believe any foolish interpretation. Who says Revelation 10 is already fulfilled? The Lord has already come. Forget it. As long as I'm here, he has not yet come. Um, because if he comes, I go. If he comes, I go. Sure, sure. So we understand all these teachings do not originate with God. And if you read Revelation chapter 10 precisely, you must take it to Malachi chapter 3. There are two things said in the first promise. The first, I will send my messenger before my face. And the second, the angel of the covenant will come to his holy temple. The angel of the covenant, the rainbow, speaks about the covenant. We will go here into details about Revelation 10, about Revelation 11. Beloved brothers, I have to share this with you in every place. Please, don't believe any interpretation. I was together with Brother Brad just six weeks before the opening of the seals. Brother Brad asked me in person to preach for him in Los Angeles. In the meeting, they were sharing had arranged and Brother Brennan told me I must leave Jeffersonville I must go to Tucson because of a vision the Lord has shown unto me so he asked me to preach for him and he told me according to the vision the Lord had shown him he must go to Arizona and that is 
where the supernatural cloud appeared and the seven angels in the fall of a pyramid. And that is where mighty seven thunder claps were heard. And Brother Branham says, the whole earth shook and the tops of the trees were cut and the stones were rolling down the mountains. You know what I did? Together with the brethren in Tucson, we made a trip to Sunset Mountain. These eyes have seen the chopped trees. These eyes have seen the stones that were rolled down the mountain. So because I knew Brother Branham, I knew his ministry. I wasn't only acquainted with him, but per telephone I spoke to him. I was somehow with him, one heart and one soul. So I knew every step the Lord led him even to the opening of the seals and what has happened after that. So I want you to understand, I will never compromise. I will stay with the Word of God forever Amen. and ever. Amen. And therefore, it is my duty to ask you to stay in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. John 17, 17, sanctify them in the truth. Yes. Thy word yes. is the truth. Yes. So please, I emphasize again, don't receive, don't accept any interpretation. Like I said before, seven thunders, seven men, seven spirits of God, seven men, all these foolish, Interpretation, they're blasphemies. They're blasphemies. Nothing else but blasphemies. This is the original word of God. And this word will remain forever. And if somebody says the Lord has already come, tell him, as long as you are here, he has not yet come. When he comes, we go. Mortality will put on immortality. Shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and we shall see the Lord and are going to be with Him forever. Never forget this. And His bride has made herself ready. If you are part of the bride of Christ, you will not hear any man. You will hear the voice of the bridegroom. And this is, this is the only voice of the bridegroom. And because I translated every sermon Brother Brandon preached into the German language, I know every sermon, every line, every line. If you translate, you cannot skip anything. You must read, you must first understand before you can translate. So, I'm not only making the claim, but it is the truth. I know my Bible, I know my Lord personally, and by the grace of God, I know the message of the hour. And at the same time, I could place everything, brother, saying into the Word of God. I never mean two things and put the Bible aside and say this is now the message, the Word of God. No. The Bible is the message and the message is the Bible. You don't make two things. There's one God, one bride, one message, one calling of time. I don't think I would have time to come back again. I'm just now trying to reach the few countries I've not yet been to, like Mongolia and a few countries. And by the way, just about six weeks ago, it was, or it was already in October, it was so much upon my heart to reach Mongolia. And just within weeks, the Lord is giving the content. And now, 
They can even listen to the sermons on the first weekend of meetings that we have in the mission center. God is calling his people from every nation, from every tribe. And please believe it. This is the last call. This is the last message as Brother Brandon was told. The message given to you will forerun the second coming of Christ. And as I said also before, by the grace of God, I look back to more than half a century having had the privilege to share this holy and precious word of God because of the divine call the Lord gave me to go from city to city and from country to country. Amen. I finished in telling you I had a number of great and wonderful supernatural experiences. One was in January 1981. I've been to West African countries, to Nigeria, to Ghana, to Togo, and I got four bites of the sissy fly, which carries the malaria tropica. I was I just came back for Christmas 1980 and I was taken to hospital. I could not speak anymore. I was just going. The doctors had given me up. They pushed me into a room. One curtain here and one curtain here. Just into the room where people died because they had given me up. There was no hope or remedy, no blood transfusion, nothing was possible. Simply too late, too late. But then something happened. When they had pushed me into this room, I once in a while could open my eyes and saw the curtains. And then something happened. I was taken out of this room. Under the blue sky, and when I looked to my right, I saw a white-dressed multitude, which no one could number. Just as far as you could say, they were all young, all young, not over 20, maybe 17, maybe 18. At that time, I did not know what is written in Job 33, verse 25, that we shall be placed back into the days of our youth. In the resurrection, there will be no trace of sin, no trace of sickness, no trace of old age, no, no, all these things will be behind us um, will be in a perfect young body and live forever. And all the sisters had long hair and the hair was hanging down, was hanging down their shoulders. The hair was in all the different hair colors. I just want, I looked, I looked. We were going up and going up and going up like a rocket, but majestically. And brothers and sisters, and I saw something. I saw, like the Holy Spirit, God, and we were taken into glory. So I believe that all who believe God now, and if you believe God now, you believe the promised word for this day. You believe the promised message for this day. There's no rejection, no misunderstanding in your heart. God has opened your understanding to know the scripture, to know the message by divine revelation. And you will stay in the word of God, not move right, not move left, but stay with the word of God under the anointing 
and leadership of the Holy Spirit. Just for those who came later, as I said in the beginning, first God makes promises, and when the time comes, He fulfills the promise. But you must believe that promise that God might be able to fulfill that promise in you. If you don't believe that you're part of the bride, how could the Lord fulfill His promise with you? So first, and please read Galatians. Read Galatians 3. Read Galatians 4. Right to verse 28 where the apostle says, Ye brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. The children of promise believe the word of promise and receive the spirit of promise. And this is the time when we believe and receive. This is the calling out time, the separation time, the preparation time. This is your time. God bless all these friends of my beloved brother William Dust. This is the Dust family here. How many remember William Dust? A man of God. Many of the old timers have already now have gone to be with the Lord, but God will use you. How many share the word of God? May I see your hands? You are preaching. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Remember what Paul wrote to Timothy. Preach the word. Preach the word. In time, out of time, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrines, but leave unto them teachers having itching ears. You don't have itching ears. You have an open heart. An open heart to understand the word of God. May the blessings of the Almighty rest upon you. And if I don't see you again on earth, I'm looking forward to seeing you on that beautiful morning when our Lord and Bridegroom will come to take the bride. Remember Matthew 25 verse 10. They that were ready went into the marriage and the door was closed. Yes. And then came some knocking, knocking, knocking. You come now. You come now. You be called out now. You be prepared now. Knock, knocking when it's too late. This is God's time for God's people. The Lord bless you and you. Jesus, holy name. Let us stand for a word of prayer. Lord, how many wish to be remembered in prayer? We just shall believe together and pray. Oh, God. Oh, God. Glory be to God Almighty. It's a holy moment in the presence of Almighty God. Divine revelation has been granted to each and every one. You just believe, believe with all your heart. And we say, for God has prepared the world. Be dedicated to the Lord of God. the day of our bodily redemption. Our soul is redeemed. We're waiting 
for the changing of our bodies. Romans chapter 8, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and the many other scriptures. 1 John chapter 3, Beloved, our Lord, the bridegroom, is coming soon. Hear his promise, believe his promise. I claim everyone present to be in the bride of Christ, to believe the promised word, to believe the message of the hour. May the blood of the new covenant be with you and upon you. May the life that was in the blood be in you, in all the sons and daughters of God. May the word be part of you and you part of the word. Be led by the Holy Spirit into all the word and will of God. Only if we are in the word of God, we are in the will of God. And if we are in the will of God, we are in the word of God. Beloved, this is your day your special time, not because I'm here, I'm just a human being like the rest of you, but by the grace of God, I told you the truth and I shared the word of God with you. Be blessed with all the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Be ready for the return of the bridegroom. Be part of the bride of Christ. Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers <coughs> and for all my sisters. Keep them in your grace, in your word, under the blood, and lay them by the Holy Spirit. To you, the only God, we praise now and forever Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.